Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I am Vin Stone, that was Jill Bryant, and you, well, Mm -hmm. hopefully you're just you at home watching us live, twitch.tv forward slash Linux Schemecast if you get a chance, but listen to us after the fact because we are genuinely available everywhere. And YouTube has decided that we're a podcast now. This was kind of interesting. (laughs) You know, YouTube had a podcast... um, section but there was no way to be a podcast on youtube youtube just had to bless you i'm like yes you're a, you're a podcast i know a lot of you rightfully so are going youtube as a podcast mm-hmm. section i was like i understand completely understand <laughs> yeah you know to be 100 percent honest with you i'm not sure youtube realizes it has a podcast section um <laughs> but we got a notification <laughs> for um, you might if you have a youtube channel as well or if you're looking to make podcasts and put them on youtube you should have an option, or it might just be a beta thing that they're trying out that could go away tomorrow, to turn a playlist into a podcast. What does that do? I don't know. YouTube didn't get that far in the explanation, but it has given <laughs> me the option to turn this from a regular playlist into a podcast, which allegedly does something different than a regular playlist. Remains to be seen. More at 11. We'll find out a little bit later. But I do... I do want to thank uh, the Fedora project for, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, retooting on Mastodon? Yeah, um, actually, it's called Publish now, so republishing. <laughs> That's dumb. We're just going to call I it retooting. Um, retooting is better. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I, Joe's off doing scale, so I had something I rarely have, which is mm-hmm. like a block of free time to do things that I just do not get the chance to do. And one of those things was installing a distribution live and i wanted to play around with silver silver blue from fedora nice and that's what i did last week which was fun and playing around with it on real hardware you know Mm -hmm. because how boring is it when somebody goes i'm reviewing this on a vm (laughs) yeah (laughs) you coward put that on a pc you don't learn anything from a vm so we put it on the rectangle the 5600g got it installed and it was fun because it quickly turned into Twitch installs Fedora Silverblue and it, you know, gets people out of the woodworks, dropping their hints and allegations and thoughts and how things should go. And I was learning a lot because I've never touched uh, Silverblue. Knew very little about flat packs, but I was able to get uh, Steam installed. That nice. wasn't the problem. We got uh, Half-Life up and running. I no saw problem. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of fun. Um, just to put a boat on the joke, I also installed XFCE. Woohoo, of course. <laughs> and the in. Higher time, Jill, I complained about um, a very honest review of GNOME. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I figured you might. <laughs> I don't. Why is this like this? Why is this? This makes no sense. And um, But, you know, at the end of the day, and I said it during the video, I, I think I saved myself a lot of blowback because I was serious and honest from the bottom of my heart when I said, you might think I'm complaining a lot about GNOME, but nobody I know complains about GNOME more. The no users. So yeah, spare me your true, feedback. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good time. And I got to talk to uh, one of the people behind uh, the Silver Blue project with the XFC. So that was kind of fun. Oh, awesome, Van. Had a good time. How about you? Did you do anything? Do you guys oh, just. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> just slightly. We haven't had LWW in two weeks because of my adventures at the Southern California Linux Expo 20X. <laughs> and. It was absolutely amazing. It was really a fantastic scale, and uh, our our pen, our numbers are of the attendance was much better than the pre-pandemic numbers. Uh, the 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 last two scales previous to this one were huh, a third the size. <laughs> so it was nice to be back at you know full speed again, and it was. <laughs> What was so awesome for me, you then, guys kind of had like scale back to back, though. Yeah, I, we did because because last year it was postponed from March to July, mm-hmm. so it had only been eight months since the last scale uh, for this year's. And that might sound like a lot, but there's a lot of planning that goes into that, and so you lose three Absolutely. months of time. I was rushing. I was rushing. It just I felt like I never had enough time, so that that was hard. It all it all uh, came through. Uh, at the end, but it was, yeah, there was a lot of rushing those last few months. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my <laughs> gosh, I got three. It's in, it's in less than three months, you know, instead of three months more. <laughs> so 
that was definitely a thing. And it was just, it was, for me, it was so wonderful because I had my three community booths next to each other at scale. And it made it so much easier for me working my text digital booth and Linux Chicxulub booth and having my friends at the Lutris booth right around the corner. And that was awesome. And this year, uh, Strider had lots of help at his Lutris booth. We had Empty in our LGC chat who missed last year's skill, but came to this one. And it was so wonderful being with him again. And we had Glorious Egg Roll, um, a well-known Proton and Lutris de developer, and our, our patron in chat. Woohoo! And Alex Sipes from our, our chat was, was there too. And it was wonderful to meet him. He's, he's such a cheerful and upbeat guy. I loved him to death. <laughs> and at the Linux Chicks LA booth, as you see, the, the, there's a picture scrolling with me and a Mad Dog, John Mad Dog Hall. At the Linux Chicks LA booth, we won the Best Scale Spirit Award. And right was, when I was presented with the award, the award, here comes John Mad Dog around the corner to uh, talk to me at the booth. And I got to spend about a half hour with him. And he, and he told me stories about how he helped and Linus Torvalds helped start the Linux Chicks uh, um, organization, worldwide organization. So that was really, really special. You know, he's Linux royalty, <laughs> Mad Dog is. So, wow, <laughs> that was so cool. And we also had some awesome uh, raffles at our Linux Chicks LA booth, and we got $500 in donations. We raffled off a 49 inch TV, a Samsung, some Samsung TV sound system, and a laptop. You got to get a Samsung. I, <laughs> Samsung, <laughs> Samsung. <laughs> but we had just such a wonderful time. Uh, you probably saw the one of the pictures of us at one of our dinners on Thursday night, and that was wonderful to have all my three communities together: LGC, LWW, <laughs> Linux Chicks LA, and Text Digital, and to have everyone together. It was just, it was awesome. And it made it so much easier for me. So I didn't have to run from one side of the expo hall to the other to work booze. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> so did you do anything fun? Oh, absolutely. The dinners were some of my favorite part, you know, just uh, being able to chat with everyone. And then, uh, you know, just meeting, um, me meeting viewers and patrons and... Uh, working the conference as well. So I, so other people get to go and go to all the talks and everything. And I only got to go to two talks. <laughs> Which ones so, did you get to go to? So I got to go to Nova King's talk on um, his uh, Stardust, Stardust XR uh, VR desktop implementation. And that was incredible. And uh, then I got to see the, the, uh, creator one of the creators of unix for the final keynote and that was really really cool <laughs> did he say anything or did they just wheel him out like on a dollar like, <laughs> they wheeled hey, him out everyone just take a look all right yeah, yeah. <laughs> thompson he 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 actually didn't talk about unix at all during the talk it was it was about one of his hobbies good got on yeah. him. i would have showed up really like, hey, man, we're gonna talk about yeah. ham and spaghetti yeah <laughs> Yeah, so it was an incredible scale, and uh, I, I worked really hard, but it was so worth it. And I want to put a shout out, thank you to Alan, who was our cameraman for uh, Text Digital. And, and yeah, we got to hire him. That was cool. <laughs> Good times. So, yeah. penguins lay eggs. This yes, is a fact. they do. This is nothing you can dispute. You might be like, nah, man, penguins lay squares or dodecahedrons. I'm like, nah, man, mm -hmm. it's a eggs all the way down. And I'm not just talking about that because I'm trying to hit you with science. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm doing it because I want to tell you about a fun little tool that I ran across. And um, maybe you're familiar with something like this. You're looking at this. You're like, hey, th this uh, seems a little bit familiar, Ben. I'm like, yeah, 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 all right. Because you remember Nopix way back in the day? Oh, love Nopix. Still have CD, it installed. You can pop in, put it yeah. in, play around with it. Now you can basically just turn your system into a live ISO or installable ISO. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty cool. And you might be thinking, hey, Vin, Norton, Ghost, Clonezilla, 
you can do this, but you can do it with this and you can create a clean slate if you want. You can wipe all the user information. It's like yeah. equipping your machine with a reproductive system. It's pretty yeah, neat. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and it does support Debian, uh, Ubuntu, Arch, Manjaro, which is also Arch. And um, I had a good time with it. I Okay, let me, let me rephrase. What do I mean by a good time? I tried to get it set up through the GitHub repo, right? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> just, just, just let that go. Let that go. Let me show you what I ended up having to do. You go to Penguin Eggs. .net. Then you go to Debs, which takes you to SourceForge. And there's some recent um, AMD 64 Debs. And I did that and I did the apt install yeah. from there. And that was able to pull all the needed dependencies. Nice. But, yeah. And uh, yeah, I just ran it right from the command line just to test on the box that you're using right now, Jordan's box, which is the uh, rectangle that we had uh, silver blue on last week. Oh, yes. Cool. <laughs> In about two, two and a half minutes, it had pulled the system together, packed it up, and created a nice little ISO installable image ready to go. Oh, that's wonderful. That's so wonderful. Yeah, Penguin Eggs, I've noticed it's so very well thought out. Um, it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful app to remaster your system to for installation via live USBs. And uh, this... It allows you to use a CLI installer or a GUI Calamari's installer of your remastered image, which I thought was really cool. M most of the other options out there don't have, have GUI in command line. They have one or the other usually. A witch tried, desperately tried, and it's like, hey, do you want to install the GUI? No, I don't know. I mean, so get that away from me. I'm just using command line. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, years ago, I've, you know, I tried many utilities to copy a Linux system to live USB with varying su success. Because, you know, when you have a system, like I, ha I had one of my animation computers with probably over 100 animation programs and their configurations, and I didn't want to have to, you know, reinstall that on another machine at, for my render farm. So I used to use, uh, th there was a, a Debian one I used to use years ago for doing this. And, but this, this was, this is so much easier. Um, and, you know, being able to have this option is just such a time saver, especially when you have hundreds of apps that need to be installed in their configurations. When you need a clean system, this is what you're yeah. going to be looking at. It's not necessarily the apps. It is the individual specialized configuration that I would run into them yeah. in this particular, because I need a lot of backend stuff custom configured to run real time mm -hmm. audio. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. And this would this be a good option for you. <laughs> just straight up applications at all. This is system config files and all that. But you do have the option yeah. to just snapshot it as the user. You can do a clean install like you normally would, or you can, you know, do what Norton Ghost or Clonezilla does. It's just clone mm -hmm. the drive. And that's what I traditionally do, is just clone the drives. They're ready to yeah. go. Each of these PCs has another drive in it ready to go, just in case, because I'm that type of person when it comes to doing live stuff. <laughs> like boom, 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 we're done. But it's good to have these because these are a lot smaller than a, just a yeah hard hard drive image yeah, yeah. just like two gigs mm -hmm. have that sitting around it's there link's going to be in the show notes go play around with it and you know there's no such thing as a bad backup option so maybe this is something you might want to look into for like quick deployment or just to have around the house once you get everything set up on your PC just so we're not talking about your games and all of your music but just that core system. Yeah. Penguin eggs. When you need to go to work quickly. <laughs> yeah, just get it, get it back up in, in less. Yeah. This, this is the kryptonite. This is kryptonite to distro hoppers. So. <laughs> yes. Like, Ew, that takes all the fun out of it. <laughs> like, I, I enjoy the Insta. I don't. I just want it to be back <laughs> up and running. So we had something happen, Jill, uh, because we got to mention about this. And then we talked about it on the show yeah. about seven months ago. Yes. <laughs> Those wacky kids over at DreamWorks had an announcement. Yeah. So this is, you know, huge news. DreamWorks Animation has just released Moonray. It's in-house developed animation software as open source. Woohoo! So Moonray is a state-of-the-art Monte Carlo ray tracing renderer developed by DreamWorks engineers, which has been used on feature films such as How to Train Your Dragon, Shrek, the bad guys, the upcoming Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, and of course will be used, you know, in future titles for the company. And this is just wonderful news. And honestly, 
DreamWorks is no slouch in their support for open source. They have provided many open source animation plugins, APIs, and apps like OpenDCX, USD Manager, Forest Flow, and Open Subdiv or Open Subdivision, to name a few. And a lot of animators out there have used a lot of these plugins and AP APIs, including me. <laughs> so, and DreamWorks also has created animation plugins for Blender. Um, I know, I've known a few people over the years that work at DreamWorks, and they were, the last few years, I've been really working on a lot of plugins for Blender, and they use Blender in-house as well. And, you know, I was, uh, me and Ven were talking earlier when I was doing freelance, uh, professional freelance work in animation, I had the opportunity to use Moonray, and I remember loving it, but I couldn't remember, it was so long ago, I couldn't remember exactly what I used it for. And I just kind of re remembered I had to convert the configuration file to use it for RenderMan and using, bringing in my 3D Studio and Maya projects into RenderMan. So that was a thing. <laughs> I, I used the plugin. <laughs> oh, boy. And uh, it is, it, you know, it's just so wonderful for us animators to have another open source industry standard option. And thank you, Artharin, our advisor, for putting this in our uh, show suggestions. Yeah, as Ven was saying, we were, we've talked about it quite a while ago, and now it's official. They made the official announcement. Very it's cool. been a minute. Yeah, that's, uh, mm -hmm. I had to go back and look. It's like, I, I know we've talked about this. I'm just yeah. going over their website, looking at a bunch <laughs> of things. And you know what? You know, the code base is available. You can get it right now. OpenMoonRay.org. It's under Apache 2 license, open source. Good. You know, it's a, mm -hmm. some people think that's not perfect, but you know what? Perfection's the enemy <laughs> of good enough. So here we are. And I'm very happy to see this. And they've, worked, they've been working with a small set of beta testers to uh, make sure the code base is easy enough to get up and running outside of the DreamWorks pipeline. So that was very good forward thinking mm -hmm. on them instead of just dumping everything, sanitizing it and say, here, have fun. The source does use CMake, so you're familiar with that. I'm familiar with that. Not a problem there. Hunting down the dependencies, that was a bit of a chore. Uh, Had yeah. some fun with that. Fortunately, <laughs> they have the dependencies listed on the page, on their GitHub page, which is really nice to see. We can take a look at those real quick. Mm -hmm. There were nothing, quite a few of them. <laughs> nothing earth shattering. Let's go ahead and take a uh, sneak peek over here uh cloning building moonray the documentation's kind of all over the place and you got to dig it around but the dependencies nothing crazy but boost lua python uh something that's probably gonna uh, pull up some hackles cuda you need cuda which also means you need optics sdk from nvidia in order to get this done um you know qt micro http ember nothing nothing completely crazy but it would be helpful. It would be helpful if somebody mm -hmm. just stacked all that together for uh, the Debian packages and the RPM packages. And there's yeah. literally there's a couple of different <laughs> threads right now on getting Open Moonray up and running on. Um, we don't call it CentOS, in Rocky Linux, and oh, okay. um, Ubuntu, mm -hmm. Debian variants, and the like, which is really good to see. And you know, it's good. I was very happy to see that it has GPU support built into it because mm -hmm. traditionally mm -hmm. large house animation uh, rendering farms are cpu based because uh, yeah. that for the technical reasons i won't go into but just recently you're starting to see like mid-scale and smaller scale taking advantage of the massive parallelization in gpus and this is moonray is able to take care of that and i was i saw the optics and I'm like that's awesome that's really good to see and uh because you know smaller scale work we stuff we're gonna yeah, be doing absolutely. ourselves and you know when we get um like Lux render level integration into Blender eventually down the road. That's where things are going to get like super interesting when we start mm -hmm, uh, seeing mm -hmm. that type of integration <laughs> with this. Um, you know, always stuff I'm interested in, definitely outside of my wheelhouse, but I'm glad to just have these tools available. This is, this is a yeah. very weird thing to look at in 2023 when you go back to 2001. Like, you know, applications like this, you had to know somebody to even know they existed. And, mm -hmm. you know, people yeah, weren't openly talking about them. Right. You yeah. Know, this were trade secrets. So just 
yeah, it's really cool. It was one of the good things about 2023. Yes. <laughs> Woohoo. Anything else you want to cover on that? Um, it's, a lot of movies have been made. We went looking at that, like the original yeah. Shrek, Puss in Boots, How to Train Your Dragons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's just it's just nice, you know. Uh, I've been using Render Man for years and years because it, um, you know, they had they did eventually put out a free version, so um, it still has some proprietary blobs in it, but mm-hmm. it's it's still you know you can download it and use it, and it's nice to see DreamWorks. You know that this is kind of their competitor to that, so nice. <laughs> it's pretty fascinating. You know what else is fascinating? When mm-hmm. I check the emails and I see that we have new people joining us at patreon.com yeah. forward slash Linux Gamecast, helping us out because hey, we throw in a bunch of stuff to sweeten the deal. If you need a lot of extra Linux Gamecast or just Linux stuff to listen to, I got the live and uncut series just for you. You listen to these shows, they're about 30 minutes. The full live and uncut version is about an hour, hour and a half. Linux Gamecast weekly is like four or five hours long if you include the pre pre super shows. And then speaking of that, if you want to find out the behind the scenes, how the sausage is made, that's what we do in the pre pre super shows. And you could even check in that live. I know what Jill does mm-hmm. on um, oh, yeah. Saturdays. <laughs> Jill popping. Uh, mm-hmm. What else we got? We got merch, a bunch of other stuff, access to our show notes, uh, live video feeds of the pre shows and stuff like that. Uh, just, just stick around. You see anything that entices you, then come say hi in our Discord. Because that's another thing that you can do by becoming yeah. a patron. Now we need to thank two new patrons and somebody who has increased their pledge. Yeah. So we have N Mag who has increased yeah, his pledge. Jill, how dare you? It's N underscore Mag. Oh, N underscore Mag. Yeah, <laughs> increased his <laughs> pledge. Thank you, N N underscore Mag. <laughs> And Glorious Egg Roll is a new Patreon. <laughs> we we got him back. Woo! Because, you know, he, we got to meet him at scale and we encouraged him to become a patron again. And he'd been watching for years and he has been a patron in the past, but he hadn't been in our Discord. So that was really cool. <laughs> and and Blasphemo. <laughs> yeah. Blasphemo. Blas- Blas- Blasphemo. <laughs> That's hard to say. B L A S P H M A. I A blasphemy Mia blasphemy. Yeah. <laughs> Just call him Blasty. Yeah, I've been having a lot of fun talking to him in chat. <laughs> awesome. Good times. <laughs> Always glad to see new people um, showing up. And um, what was it? Uh, oh yeah, Biatko has uh, started oh. uh, hanging out with us. He running a bit yeah. late on because we do a thing on Tuesdays and Fridays. That we hadn't even mm-hmm. mentioned this, but you thought we were going an entire week without mentioning what we do on Tuesdays and uh, Fridays, and that's Trackmania. That's what we did last night. We mm-hmm. got our own little private Trackmania server that we get together as an excuse to hang out. It doesn't matter if you're the damn, it's puzzle platforming. And if you're looking for a good crippling addiction, it's got you covered. Or if you need to reignite an old one, like some people have, <laughs> they're like, I remember playing this game. Like, oh, it's back. And it, it hits differently when you have a group of people together. And we put together 14 new tracks each and every week. We go through it, we have fun, and we have a little pseudo competition on Friday. Calling it a competition is just an excuse to laugh at each other as we're trying to race for points. Yeah. <laughs> Get over obstacles. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it's maximum silliness. So if you need that in your life, uh, you can. Well, broom, broom to you too, Mr. Carter. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was loud. Uh, loud. Yeah. <laughs> the. You can do that if you're a patron or if you're a Twitch sub. It's just there to make sure we're not, because we're trying to keep it under 12 people. Because after 12 people, it gets kind of haywire because we do live chat, video and audio. If you want, you know, you don't have to be. We get some people like, I don't want to talk or listen to you people. I just want to come race in there. That's cool, too. Yeah. And your times are, mm-hmm. we're, we're somewhere around like 2015 right now because we're, go- we're archiving, pulling up old tracks, and we're working mm-hmm. our way to the future. But we're also uh, able to compete on a universal, like, letterboard. Like, it is accepted as Datamania. And it's fun going back and we're setting like, you know, new scores on old maps and confusing people like, what are these randos doing? So come hang out with us. Have a good time. Love to see you. Love to chat with you. And uh, we mm-hmm. do thank you for your support. Now, let's talk about spending money. Yeah. With a now, I saw, I <laughs> this saw gives this. gives me nerd t- chills. I, <laughs> I saw this. Um, Look at that. Ah, no, look at it, Jill. It's 
blinking. It's beautiful. It's horrible. It's, <laughs> it's unicorn vomit. <laughs> uh, okay, now I, I know what you're thinking. Yes, I, I know what you're thinking. Yes, 100%, you're correct. That is a Zippo <laughs> lighter and a cigarette case. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why? I didn't notice that before. Because I used to carry around a Zippo lighter and a cigarette case. The first thing it popped out, I was like, oh, I remember um, being a teenager. Okay. Here's the real thing. <laughs> Not only does this keyboard blink, it's also mechanical, Joe. Yeah. It, it, it makes Sweet. noise. Not, it's not satisfied with hurting your eyes. It wants to hurt your ears as well. But this is the MNT Pocket Reform, and they've already raised enough to get it. Their initial goal is $135,000. They get $183,651. Pretty decent for really a quad core good. ARM Cortex yeah. A53 clock at 1.8 gigajoules, 8 gigs of RAM. Okay. It's got the Vivante uh, G7. What's that? 700 QL GPU. That's not too bad. It's open source hardware, which is good. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got that horrible keyboard that blinks and makes noise, Joe. NVMe Aww. drive. <laughs> yes, he's got an NVMe drive. Well, to me, then, this little laptop looks like one of the best options for a portable Linux com computer that fits in the space, literally, <laughs> between a smartphone and full-size laptop. I can only laptop. assume he was stabbing the keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it has that uh, rainbow vomit uh, mechanical keyboard. But something I was really happy about, it has an awesome micro optical trackball to boot. I miss the days of laptops coming with a real trackball. I have several in, in my collection from the 90s that have trackballs. And I've always loved the trackball on laptops. That's just brilliant because it, it's so sensitive. And well, you know my you favorite can... thing about like trackballs on laptops? <laughs> <laughs> what then? <laughs> Having to disassemble the entirety of the laptop just to clean the trackball. Oh, yeah, that is a thing. <laughs> so, uh, I know the compact ones were a little were easier to clean. Well, okay, than most. Now, here's my first thought because I have definitely had uh, laptops in the past that had trackballs and you could, they had keys on them where you could turn the um, lock mechanism and pull the ball out. Yeah, pull it up. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> And uh, the Pocket Reform also has a 7-inch diagonal, full HD, 1920 by 1200 display. That's one of my favorite as aspect ratios. It's HD+, plus, <laughs> as we used to call it. And uh, the, the price was, is really option, uh, really <laughs> option. The price options were really cool. So they ranged from $899 to $1,369. And there is even a purple option. If you're watching um, the live video, you can, you can see that there is a black one or a purple one you can choose from, <laughs> which is really cool. And uh, some of the kits, you know, you can just get the, the, the lab, little mini laptop itself, or you can get a, a kit with all kinds of goodies with it. Uh, like a poster, comes with a poster and, and lots of uh, cool swag so you can you know, talk about how much you love, show how much you love your pocket reform. And <laughs> I want all the goodies with it. So I want the more expensive one. <laughs> and when I look at something like this and, you know, in initially, um, you know, if you keep track of what it takes to get stuff made, I'm quickly scrolling back, you know, when you see like a hundred, hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty thousand mm dollars -hmm. as opposed to, you know, things that we've talked about in the past that were like, oh, we just wanted like sixty thousand dollars. There's a difference here. These haven't been made yet. Mm -hmm. yeah, they still got to do the production run. So this, they're not only are they, they got to get everything. They, they got their bill of material together. I think they're ready to go. They're pretty sure they just haven't put in that big order. And, you know, they mentioned that at the end. That's nothing mm -hmm. to get scared of. You just got to understand that there are risk and challenges versus some other projects where, you know, I said, oh, these things are clearly, they're already made. They're just waiting to see how many they need to ship out. Yeah. When can they expect to uh, get these fulfilled, though? Hmm. You know what? I did look, but I didn't didn't find find that. Let's see. March. Uh, no, March twenty first is their technical walkthrough. Do 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 do. do. Two updates. I mean, it is funded. Uh, yes. Funding ends at. Uh, hmm. View, maybe under view purchasing options. Let's see. 
Orders yeah. placed now ship May 31st, 2023. Okay, that's for the shirt. Uh, October 17th. Uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> all right, all right. So October is um, n- yeah. not next month. So, no, what, but it's only a few months. months. Yeah. yeah. Only okay. a few months away for something that looks, it looks so finished in the video. It, it I, I want to be fair. Beautiful. It is a very chunky bump up. It is not, yeah. it, it is not felt by any stretch of the imagination. This is clearly something that you can print, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a part of that event is because it's modular. So you can later, you know, upgrade oh, your CPU and RAM. Oh, framework's going to get onto you. Yes. The framework's like, oh, you know what? Ours is modular too, Jill, and it's super thin. Yeah, this is true, but this is this is mini. This is really tiny. Oh, uh, absolutely. Man. Yeah, this, this is just a fun project. I, I like this. And I mean, you know, it's boutique pricing, which, you know, I've talked about. Like, this is a small run. So, like, $8.99. That's not crazy. That's not crazy. Uh, I didn't see an option for just uh the board itself i see like the antennas and stuff like that like i would be interested in just maybe the board mm, okay yeah i'm putting it into like a little box or something or just case. have the option to play around and experiment with you know yeah and mm-hmm. uh but you know, i wish them the best and there'll be a link to where you can go check this out yourselves in our show notes and you know the pocket pc thing if you're a fan of netbooks more of that, except this oh, yeah. one's got a clicky, blinky mechanical keyboard and a trackball. Yeah, and a nice trackball. <laughs> and, oh, it's got a cellular antenna, too. That's sweet. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I was talking about Wi-Fi the other uh, couple of weeks ago. And somebody, <laughs> oh, boy, I ran into this, like, the Wi-Fi will give you the brain worms. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. Just every time there's a, a new version of uh, cellular or Wi-Fi, people are... You know, like, oh, it's going to kill us. Radio it, waves are going to kill us. You know it's going to kill us? The sun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the chief radio wave. Um, beautiful people. Thanks for showing up. It's good to be back doing what we do. Mm-hmm. We got to run and um, see you again next week. Uh, stop in uh, Discord. Stop in IRC. We got IRC. We got a YouTube channel. Every time I say this, non-ironically, yes, we do have a YouTube channel. It's just forward slash Linux Gamecast. You'll find it. Uh, last week I brought that up and someone went, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We do. <laughs> we will yep, be there. Yep. And uh, we have a channel on Odyssey as well. So yeah, we do. I don't know oh, what and, the link is. Do a search And you for can Odyssey. watch the video on Spotify too as well. <laughs> Anywhere else? <laughs> uh, well, Twitch, of course. <laughs> There's Twitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think, man. Um, um, because I, I don't do a lot of vanity searches for my projects i'm just like uh but i know when i do like a linux game gas or whatever search i see stuff i don't even know exists but anyway you know the drill we'll see yeah. you next week yes oh thank you blobka the dog and chad for for joining us thank you so much and oh boy i want to thank everyone again who came out to the southern california linux expo you guys, every, everyone, Glorious Egg Roll, Empty, Alan, Mir, Alex, you guys just, you made it the best week of the year for me. It's very special. <laughs> Yay! And thank you to all our wonderful patrons and viewers. Without you, this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> LWW wouldn't have happened. I hope every single one of you that was just mentioned remembers to say, hey, I remember seeing Joe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'm sure. All right, 367, everybody. Let's yeah. bounce out of here. Love you all. We'll see you next week. <laughs>